Hello, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite cooking show on the web, Fan Food Fair. Triple F's baby. I'm your analyst, Art Turner, and we have another beautiful day on the Berna indeed. Our chef is going to be cooking one of his favorite meals today, and it hits close to home. So without any more wait, let's get to the action. hearing a chant in the background. Sounds familiar. Oh no he didn't. He is coming out in a Philadelphia Eagles jersey. Randall Cunningham number 12. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is the origin for today's meal folks. Chef DeArthur is from central Pennsylvania, growing up in Lancaster and York, less than two hours away from Philly. I have an idea on what he's going to make today, but let's get to the ingredient lineup. Okay we got some veggies, onions, Mushrooms, looks like sweet peppers. We got bread in the back. He's bringing out some cheese. Looks like provolone and some cheese whiz. All right, okay, I see where he's going. Now he's bringing out the meat. Looks like some nice cuts of ribeye steak. I knew it. Chef DeArthur is making a Philly cheese steak. Since 1932, there has been a blue collar sandwich for a blue collar city. The home of Rocky Balboa, Meek Mill, and the Philadelphia Eagles. A simple yet passionate population that mirrors the simple sandwich that's packed with a powerful punch of flavor. There are many Philly cheesesteak purists out there who will be keeping a keen eye on how he makes this John. So let's go to Chef D. Arthur's mic. What up Art? So as you already know, we're going to be doing the Philly cheesesteak today. And if you ask anyone from the area, you won't get a solid answer on where to get the best cheesesteak from. It usually comes down to preference and where your favorite local neighborhood spot is. But there are some universal keys to making a traditional cheesesteak that's close to home. And so the first thing is the meat. The preferred meat for a cheesesteak is going to be the ribeye because of its nice marbling. It's going to make it nice and juicy. But if this is a little bit out of your budget range, you can also go top sirloin, round, or any steak really. So what you want to do with the ribeye steak when preparing to cook is throw it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. So it's going to get nice and firm. So it's going to be easy to get some thin slices when we throw it on the griddle. Then we have the bread. You want the bread to be soft and durable so it can hold all the, the veggies, the cheese, and the meat. Now, if you're in Philly, you want to get the fresh baked Armoroso rolls. Those are the best, perfect for cheesesteaks. But if you're not in South Philly, the next best option is to get a nice Italian hoagie roll. But again, it's soft and durable to hold everything inside. As you see with the cheese, we have the traditional whiz, cheese whiz for a cheesesteak, but also the very common provolone cheese. We're going to do both today. We're going to do two sandwiches, one with the provolone and one with the cheese. I'm also going to start cooking on the vegetables as well, the onions, the peppers, the mushrooms, and then we'll go from there. Back to you, Art. He's oiling up three pans, looks like for the veggies. In goes the onions, then the mushrooms, and the sweet peppers. He's going to give the veggies a quick salt and pepper, let the onions caramelize, and they'll be ready for the sandwich. Now the chef is going to start slicing the ribeye. He's cutting the meat in thin slices, very thin for the griddle, so it's going to be easy to cook. He's going to give it a nice little rough chop again. Veggies are now done. How do you order a cheesesteak in Philly, chef? So if you're ordering a cheesesteak at one of the local Philly joints, this is how you order correctly so you don't get attitude from the cook or the server. Real simple, real quick, real easy. If you want a steak sandwich with onions, you're gonna say, can I have one steak with? The with, the without relates to the onions. So now if you want the cheese, 
you're gonna say, can I have one whiz with, which means can I have one whiz, cheese whiz cheesesteak with onions. For the cheesesteaks I'm gonna to make today, because I like the works, I like the sweet peppers, I like the mushrooms with mine. How I order when I'm in Philadelphia, I say, can I have one provolone with and sweet peppers and mushrooms? A little bit longer, a little bit more complicated, but it's very easy. But time to assemble. Back to you, Art. Chef D. Arthur has the steak browning. The veggies are warming on the griddle as well. He is toasting the hoagie roll right beside the ingredients. Time to make it a happy marriage. Oh man, you hear that sizzle? Now this is a tricky maneuver, placing the hoagie on top of the meat and veggies. He's gonna use his spatula to turn it over. Let's see how he does. Not too bad of a scoop. He gets most of the ingredients up on one go. Ah, he's starting with the cheese whiz first. Look at that drippy and melty cheese. Looks amazing. Absolutely stunning. Let's get to him cooking the provolone steak. He's doing the same thing, making it a happy marriage. A nice solid scoop again with the hoagie. Wow, look at these sandwiches. These look amazing. Both cheese steaks, the whiz and the provolone. Lord have mercy. Classic cheese steaks from a native Pennsylvanian. Chef D. Arthur trained hard for this moment and it paid off. The fans from Philly would be proud. Well, there you have it, folks. Episode 2 of Season 2 of Fan Food Fair. Another beautiful day on the Berna, indeed. Hopefully, you had a chance to learn a little bit about Philadelphia and their prized cheesesteak. If you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe to Data Productions for more content. We'll see you next time. Farewell and go birds.